And what role will these big games early in the year have in all this? Well, you know, it, it, you know, you'll you'll have a read on how they handle big games and how they handle adversity, because the Trinity League is stacked up pretty good, and they're the you know, I mean, they're going to play six big games right in a row. I honestly believe that. Because you put IMG in front of it because we don't have a buy going into yeah. league. So, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll find out what we're all about in those six. Hello, everybody. Dan Albano here again with the Orange County Register and OCVarsity.com. And you have found the Tree League Football Podcast. We are going toward week zero. And we're once again joined, like always, by our Tree League insider, Scott Barajas. Scotty, how are you doing this this evening, as we're uh, recording here on August 13th, 2018, getting ready for week zero. I'm good, Dan. You know, that's kind of crazy that it's August 13th and we're already talking the start of the season. Um, but it's uh, going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it, and I'm sure you are as well. Yes, a little bit of a sad day in Orange County High School Athletics because there was the passing of a a Newport Harbor legend. Did you hear about the uh, the famous shot putter who passed away earlier today uh, from, uh, I think, the 1970s at Newport Harbor? Was that, uh, that uh, Jim the Anvil Nightheart? Jim the Anvil Nightheart, that's right. <laughs> Former shot put champion um, from Newport Harbor. 1973 state champion in the shot put. Still holds the school record. I wonder if he ever played football, but I was a big, uh, I'm a big wrestling fan, at least from when I grew up in the the 1980s, and I was a big Jim, Jim the Anvil guy with the Heart Foundation. Yeah, that's right. I, I'm right there with you too, Dan. I remember that as well. Uh, uh, you know, it's a sad day as uh, just having to think about he's not the only one. I mean, it, I think the the past couple of months, a lot of those uh, WWEF wrestlers have been uh, passing away. So, um, you know, it is what it is, but uh, yeah, it's, it is a sad day. That's true. I got to believe he probably played football at some point. I mean, what big stud shot putter doesn't play some football at some time at Newport Harbor, but I'll have to do some investigative journalism to see if he ever did play football. But uh, the season is finally here, 2018 Tree League season, and uh, it's an interesting time with these non-league games. The road to the Tree League begins this coming uh, Thursday with a, uh, with a couple uh, Thursday night games. Servite taking on Bakersfield at Santa Ana Stadium on on um, August 16th, Thursday. And then that same night, Santa Margarita playing host to Downey. That game's at Tribuco Hills. Both 7 o'clock starts. And the, that, the opening audio that we had was, of course, Bruce Rollinson talking about what it's going to be like in this non-league season for modern-day top-ranked team in the country. Uh, defending national uh, national champions. This is really going to show a lot about their team as they get to the Trinity League um, season because of the demands of this non-league season. So in the course of our of our show tonight, we are going to have our continue our, our previews and we're going to have season outlooks on each of the uh, six Trinity League teams. And we're also going to have our breakout players to watch. Last week we did our... Uh, our uh, under the radar players. Now we're going to have our breakout players, and we're also Sky and I are also going to have our uh, se- our season predictions one through six. We're gonna we're gonna uh, you know have our fearless predictions, and then we're gonna end the show by looking at um, these week zero games. Everybody in the Trinity League is uh, in action, including including on Friday night the first ever game at uh, St. John Bosco's new seven million dollar stadium. They're taking on uh, uh, Temp Temp View of uh, Provo, Utah. So, Scott, are you pretty fired up about this uh, schedule? Uh, You know, there's some good games we'll be talking about later, I think. Yeah, there will be. Um, You know, like we said, they started on Thursday, uh, continue on Friday. Um, You know, it'll just, it's just the uh, start of the season, and we'll just see how it goes from there. All right, well, let's start. As far as our outlooks of these teams, let's start with the guys that are playing on Thursday. So let's let's start with those Santa Margarita Eagles, um, Coach Rich Fisher's teams. Uh, Rich Rich Fisher's team really uh, got a new look this year. 
The obviously a lot of attention on the new quarterback, Peter Costelli, just a uh, sophomore transfer from St. John Bosco, who's looked good on the frost soft level. He's uh, you know looks like a college prospect. He must be pretty good um, to be the starter as a sophomore. Santa Margarita kind of surprised me last year. They were three and two in the Trinity League. They got third place, uh, seven and four. Um, had a notable victory at J. Sarah in the league. That was a probably the high one of the highlights of their season last year. But Scotty, as we bring down we break down the Eagles, what's your outlook for uh, Santa Margarita? You know, uh, they're kind of been an enigma this off season. You know, I'm not sure if, if they're a top five team in Orange County. Um, you know, I think they're going to get the benefit of the doubt because as they are a Trinity League team, they don't return a lot, um, and I don't think they had anything really that talented on their freshman and lower levels. Um, like we said, they're building within. They didn't rely on a lot of transfers. Um, they do have the sophomore quarterback, Peter Caselli, and that's a great uh, start to build with. Um, but they're solid on the offensive line that returns four out of five starters with, you know, tackle Brandon Schillig and his brother, Jason Schillig at guard. They have center, center Donovan Aureliana and guard Matthew Killander. Um, you know, the pass catchers, you know, are going to be the returners, Chad Niad and Jake Ebach, who led them with 21 catches for 433 yards and then newcomer tight end to watch for uh, Gary Morrison. And then Jake Thomas returns, you know, a running back with his 443 yards. You know, defensively, two starters return with defensive back Blake B. Uh, and defensive lineman Logan Schwenke. And then Mark R. Jr. comes over from Olu to help up shore up the secondary with a sophomore one to watch and Keanu Kama at corner. And then you have newcomers Tyler Hardigan, which is Jim Hardigan's son, right. and Connor Burke and Nick Barcelona rounding out their linebackers you know the defensive line has interesting twist as they plan to uh, use converted O lineman 320 pound pound Isaac Tulipa Sia nose guard and they're kind of going to take a page from Bosco and modern day kind of manning sides at that nose guard you know to plug up that middle you know combining with Schwenke and part-time starter Billy Oberhertz at DN you know that rounds out Santa Marguerite's defense so you know it's it's going to be one of those kind of wait and see with Santa Margarita. Um, you know, they take on a Downey team that's pretty much athletic, um, and they were pretty solid last year, but Santa Margarita kind of handled them last year. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll kind of talk about that in our in our preview, but that kind of rounds out Santa Margarita. Well, good job, Scotty. That is some great insight by you, breaking down um, that team. You know, the, the big thing, you know, is the theme is just that there's, like you're pointing out, I mean, a lot of these guys that you talked about, besides the O-line, there's just not a lot of uh, players back, and even if you look at the the tr- all Trinity League team last year, they don't have a single all league player back. Um, so they have some very good players, but they didn't have they don't have any all leaguers back. So that's going to be they're adjusting on the fly. I like the direction that, um, and I like that you said last week. You know that I think Rich Fisher likes the low profile. I don't have Santa Margarita ranked as high as. Um, maybe some people do, you know, in Orange County, I see them, I have them eighth in Orange County. Um, and I think that's, um, that's where I would put them where I have, uh, you know, Orange Lutheran, modern day, Jay Sarah, um, you know, in the top three in Orange County. And then I come in with like Mission, La Habra, San Clemente, Crone Del Mar. And then I have to really make a choice between, you know, Santa Margarita and, and Servite. Of course, we're taking out uh, Bosco out of the equation. So, really a new look team. I think Rich Fisher, like you said, likes the low profile. I think they're going to try to, you know, um, maybe do some new things scheme wise. I think they're building there. They're going to try to not. To, they're going to try to play really disciplined football, mistake free football. Um, I think uh, the running back uh, Jake is going to have a big year with that offensive line, but they're going to have to. Uh, they're going to have to show teams that they can pass the ball, especially in the Trinity League. And if they don't have a dynamic, uh, balanced offense, that will take away their run game. And then they will have some problems scoring. And I think they're going to have some problems. Uh, they could have some problems slowing some people down uh, on offense, uh, at least some of the high explosive teams, which we know are coming in the Trinity League. Exactly. You know, I'm, I'm pretty right there with you. I think they're right about an eight-ranked, ninth-ranked team. 
Um, and uh, I, I, I agree with you on that, on that part of it. All right, Scotty. The other team that's playing this week uh, on Thursday, we're starting with the early birds, is Servite. So the Troy Thomas uh, tour number two is going to be uh, in full effect. Uh, Coach Thomas takes over, as we mentioned, for Scott Meyer, who's moved on now to University in Irvine, back in the Pacific Coast League. But Troy Thomas is back at Servite, where he had considerable success. You know, he came in... Um, it was at a time where Servite, you know, they, it was it was a, it was a tough moment for him. They tried to get the legendary coach John Barnes, and they did get him to be the head coach. Um, but then he, on the same day, he was introduced to the team. He he reneged, went back to his uh, kids at Los Al, couldn't break him the news. Stood and remade at the school that he helped make a powerhouse, and a and uh, he he stayed true to the Griffins. But then then came in Troy Thomas. Restored and really elevated the program. You know, won two uh, back-to-back Pac-5 titles. You know, he won a state title. But now it's it's a much different Trinity League. Modern day, Bosco are much more powerful. And he lost a ton of talent. But what's your thoughts on the Servite Friars? Yeah, it's going to be hard-pressed for the Friars to make any noise in, in league, you know, but they certainly have some upside with their young skill players up and coming. Um, and they, you know, but do they take their lumps with the rigors and the physicality of the Trinity League? Um, you know, with Blaze McKibben at QB, you know, he's going to be teamed up with newcomers uh, Julian Alessi, the PV transfer we had talked about, right. and, Damian, and junior Damian Moon. Um, he's an Oakland Patterson high transfer from up north. Um, and Los Al sophomore transfer Zedekiah Center is probably they're going to be at the wide receiver spots. Now the looming question mark of the offense is who's going to be a running back for the Friars. I know Dan, you mentioned Isaiah Latua Uli, yes. at running back. You know he won't be flashy, but he's you know he could possibly also be joined by uh, St. John Bosco sophomore transfer two-way uh, player Kyle Bandy. Bandy played running back uh, at as a freshman last season so he but he may be needed more on the defensive side of the ball so we'll have to see um and like we said the team strength going into to the season our offensive linemen richard and clarence krebs nick martinez kyle revere and uh jeremiah lutahula um isaiah's brother and then he's going to be a junior um so bottom line is i don't think we're going to see any impact senior skill players this year so watch you know, for those sophomores and possibly a few freshmen, specifically 6'3 receiver, Tatora T-Mac McMillan. So he's one of their top freshmen to, to watch for. Um, and then defensively, you know, it may be more challenged than filling the offensive needs as they only return one starter on defense and free safety, Cade Fuller. I, I do know Los Al sophomore transfer is Noah Avinger is going to join Fuller at corner and possibly Daniel Anderson at free safety. Um, after that, it's going to be a bunch of more newcomers. You know, at linebacker, part-time starter Andrew Marmood returns, along with uh, the pair of St. John Bosco transfers who could, could boost the need here, which is, again, I mentioned earlier, Bandy, he's a 5'10", 190 guy, um, and senior Chris Villarreal, 5'11", 218. So, and then on the defensive line, um, they get an Olu junior transfer, Ender Aguilar, who actually played tight end on the varsity level last year. And so he could be utilized here for, for the Friars. Um, if they match the same strength on the defensive line as they do the offensive front, they could be in games. But without depth and strength, I don't know if the Friars can stop teams defensively. Well, interesting. Uh, well, good job on the Friars. Who were one and four in league last year? They got Orange Lutheran. Everybody beat Olu last year. Uh, Lancers were zero and five, six and five for Servite. You know, it's it, you mentioned more uh, transfers than I was expecting to hear, um, but that's kind of but that also fits the word that I had heard, and I know you had heard that there was a lot more depth uh, transfers that maybe we didn't know of, and uh, some younger guys. Um, so that's going to be interesting, and I'm going to have we're going to end this show. So everybody, um, please stay to the end of the show. I'm going to have we'll have a little uh, comment from Co- Coach Troy Thomas on some of his philosophies on building this team, and I think he wants to keep um, those freshmen off the field. I think he looks at it as a process, and I think there's some some parallels between maybe how Santa Margarita and Servite approach this. I think both these teams, these programs, 
will actually be better next year than they will this year. So this is an important building year. They need to find some positives. Um, so I, I th that's how I look at it. And I, I think another thing to, to watch is just, you know, Coach Thomas and how the team responds to him and how, you know, um, how they can get some wins. Because he did not win much at the end at Crespi. Yeah, that's that's true. But, you know, if he can get this thing going, uh, you know, especially with this uh, Thursday night game against the Drillers, because I, I, I honestly think, you know, the Friar just can possibly pull that one out. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. So, And it all is interesting. As, and I talked to Coach Thomas uh, late last week. They're still at a nine-game schedule, which – I think is uh you know is still is quite a bit of blow because um as far as preparations for the Trina League they're going to get their five games in the Trina League that where they lose the game is they're going to lose a game of preparation in getting ready for the Trina League which is going to be tough so they're only have four non-league games they didn't have a scrimmage as well so these are some of the things that sometimes happen uh, in transitions uh new staffs um you know, and you know, if if Servite does get in a roll, roll, and they are four and zero, they're gonna probably wish, man, I wish we were five and zero. Um, we could have really used that game. Maybe if they're not winning. I mean, you could look at it a million ways. They, hey, we wanted to get that one win, or we could get an extra two or three win. You know, we could have got to win two or three. We could be four and one. Maybe we need to rest, and and uh, you know, uh, we don't need the game. We need more practice time, but. I wanted. I was curious what you thought of it, Scotty. As far as you know, it's a pretty big deal um, to me when you only have nine games and you're missing a game because we're talking about you know there's only ten regular season games and you're missing one. That's pretty. It's a tenth. That's a big deal. It is. You know, I, everybody want you know because it's one less game that you get to play and like you said, prepare time, practice time. It's just one less look cut your season short you know you know you want to play as many as as possible um you know and i and survey also you they didn't also there were another team that didn't have a scrimmage so you know this is going to be their first look on the field on thursday night so well at least they are home santa Ana stadium uh, a good uh I, I have to believe it's strategic you know you wonder like uh why are they playing at Santa Ana Stadium? And I don't know the, the, the situation at Cerritos College, but it does set up Servite um, in one way, and I don't know if this is a strategy or what you think, but they when they play Modern Day, their arch rival in their Trina League opener, uh, which will be September 28th, that game will be again at Santa Ana Stadium. So I don't think it's a coincidence that they're playing Bakersfield, but maybe uh, maybe you have some different insight on that, Scotty. No, I'm not sure why. It's 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 probably because they didn't have the stadium. But again, it's a Thursday game. Maybe they want. Maybe it is a strategic move that because they're going to play in that stadium when they play Modern Day later on. But uh, you know, who knows why uh, why they're they're going to be playing it there? All right, all right. Let's look at a team I'm very excited about. I think has. Uh, has a great chance to be really special this year, especially on offense, um, is going to be Orange Lutheran. Uh, Lancers, like we said, 0-5 last year, um, but they have a much tougher non-league schedule. I don't know if this is necessarily is going to be that game. Probably not. They're uh, opening this week against San Juan Hills, but they've got a much better non-league schedule in 2018, You know, highlighted by games against Mission Viejo, Centennial Corona. Those are going to be great games. Heritage. But, you know, Ryan Holinsky leads a dynamic offense, a South Carolina commit. Tons of receivers, two pack, 12 committed tight ends. Elijah Moraro, Ethan Ray to Cal and USC, respectively. Um, they've got uh, KJ Trio, a commit at uh, Colorado commit at one of the corners. They got JoJo Hawkins, uh, a return man, uh, adding some depth um, at receiver. You know Logan Loya. They got some good linebackers. You know, and they they have a lot of big linemen. So it'll be a matter of some guys that we don't really know on our radar. But what's your thoughts on the outlook for Orange Lutheran? Yeah, Olu, they're going to be improved, but how much is going to be the question? Um, 
you know, I, I hesitated to put them at number two in, in Orange, Orange County. It was in between them and Mission Viejo. I think they have a few more question marks than Mission Viejo, in my opinion. And I'll get to those in a bit. Um, you know, and I know the media and everybody loves Helensky and the fact that the entire offense returns pretty much 10 starters headlined, like Mia said, by Kyle Ford, Logan Loy, Elijah Maharo, JoJo Hawkins, Reggie Strong. You know, those are the guys at the skills. Now, the issue that plagued them last year was that offensive line. Now, that offensive line returns pretty much the same five kids or kids who played a lot, and that's Jake Cosavella, Ethan Howard, Jacob Rice, Logan Bathke. You know, and they're going to be a lot better with that offseason strength program and experience. Then you're going to add newcomers, Tavita Takahaka and Adrian Tena and sophomore Fiano Pepe. You know, they're going to add that depth depth and size that gives the Lancers that better foundation than last year. And Pepe is one to watch for. And he's the younger brother of St. John Bosco, D-line Kobe Pepe. So, um, you know, that's kind of interesting, you know, but it's, it's they're going to have to get that run game going, um, you know, but that's not pretty much the main concern because it's going to be their defense that is more concerning. Um, they don't have a lack of, they have lack of quality defense alignment, and that's going to be tough. Now, not one starter or player with significant experience returns, so that could be crucial. Um, they may have some newcomers that step up that, that are under the radar that nobody knows about, but at this point, they don't have um, anyone that I that I can, you know, be uh, strong about. You know, Jay Casavella may play, given the depth they have on O-line. Ethan Ray may get a look. Um, you know, the linebackers, you know, they return Jackson Cloyd and Zach Brogdon, you know, along with junior Jonah um, Loban and then uh, Servite transfer Jaron Amaso comes back and he was like Servite's third leading tackle last year. You know, the right. defensive secondary is somewhat took a hit in the offseason. They lost three players, Jojo Forrest to Mission Viejo, Mark R. Jr. to Santa Margarita and Drew Ramirez to Santa Ana. Forrest and Ramirez were starters, but they did pick up you know, Servites, KJ Cotrujillo, and Jared Barberino from Santa Margarita to go along with returner Thomas Huff at corner and Reggie Strong at free. You know, I will say they're going to go as far as Helensky can take them, um, but they're going to have to stop people on defense, and uh, they're not going to be able to get into shootouts. And I think um, we should get an early read on this Lancer team probably the week after this week when they take on Centennial. Yes, indeed. Well, great job on that one on the Lancers, and I think you've I think you've got it. Um, I think that secondary sounds a little bit better, but you, man, would they love to have probably have Ard and uh, JoJo or um, Ramirez? Uh, then they, they would be right. They would they would that would be a heck of a secondary. But it still looks all right. I think uh, Huff did look good to me, um, even on offense too, and and slot um, running back. His name hasn't come up to me too much, but I think he looked pretty good to me at the Edison passing tournament. Um, one of those linemen that you mentioned, uh, they do have, it was a pretty promising kid uh, transfer from Santa Margarita, who was one of those big O linemen um, who had, I believe, had gone to Santa Margarita, had to do the sit out last year, and was from Costa Mesa. Uh, I think that was Tavita Takahaka. Yeah. I believe so pretty big uh kid um i'll try to check him out here in the course of our show but they have a lot of size um and a lot of seniors like you said some experience and um and then a couple juniors um to watch i think it might have been isaac um oh that's right yeah i think it's what that's that's my mistake i think i messed that one up on uh we were talking about santa margarita i think that was it i think that's the kid that's at olu now yeah, uh, Tupa Tupa Pilisia. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I had six, him six. On, uh, I forgot that he moved over to to, to Olu. Yeah, he's six four, three hundred, um, and he is uh, three forty. Excuse me, he's a big guy, six four, three hundred, and forty pounds. Uh, he's a rising junior, and um, the other guy, Wes. Uh, do you mention hit Wes, right? You uh, peepee. You pee pie? You pie? Yeah. 5'11", 265. He's one of the smaller guys they have. Pepe, uh, 6'4", 325. Um, you mentioned him. He is going to be um, a sophomore. So um, I have him down as a tw- class of 2021. 
Um, so that's obviously a, a very athletic family. Um, you know, the sister is an outstanding basketball player, Kylie Pepe, as well. Um, she had played at Modern Day, but I've one of the rumors on girls' basketball, I have to check out her whereabouts. But um, that's going to be big. Uh, we continue to try to get to know these uh, the O-line at uh, Orange Lutheran, and uh, that D-line and that defense uh, will be so, uh, so important for Orange Lutheran. All right, uh, Scotty, moving on. Um, Let's let's go to the uh, St. John Bosco Braves. Let's get to the Braves. Um, last year, another you know outstanding season. They were just second behind Modern Day. You know, got to the finals again, um, but they were eleven and three, four and one overall in uh, in league uh, league play. We've uh, talked about they got a great uh, line back, um, both sides of the ball. Got some really good linemen led by, on defense. A guy I like a lot, Cole Aubrey. Really can get after the quarterback, former J. Sarah play. They got player. They got a lot of guys committed, um, and uh, they got the new stadium this year. Um, no Chad Johnson at all, offensive uh, coordinator. I think that's going to be a significant thing. Where he, Chad Johnson's now um, down at Mission Viejo as the new head coach, but uh, Coach Negro still is running the show and doing a great job, and he knows what he's doing there. Um, but uh, what, what's your thoughts on? On the Braves, Scotty, their outlook. You know, Bosco's hungry, and they uh, want to get their swagger back, and uh, rightfully so. That you know, they have enough to win it. Uh, they certainly have a horses up front on offense to score and score. You know, it's no secret their offense runs through DJ Una Analehi. I got it right. I've been practicing. Good job. Uh, with the supporting cast, you know, they have their three-headed monster of George Halani, who's the all-purpose back, Nathaniel Sambis, who's the power. And then Keith Savage, who's like the swift scat back, right. you know, and he runs pretty hard for being a, a little guy too. Um, you know, at the receivers, it's you know Chris Hudson, Bowman, and uh, Sherman Oaks, Sherman Oaks, Notre Dame newcomer uh, Bo Collins. You know, and, and tight end Jude Wolf. You know, will keep their opposition on the toes. Um, you know, last week we touched on the O line returning too. It's you know, their center Albert Reyes and the guard Mer- Meredith Ta- Talibu who's coming back from being injured after like game one. You know, it's junior Blake Metcalf and sophomore Jay Sarah transfer Logan Bednar. You know, are going to round out the tackles as their mainstays. You know, defensively, you know the defensive line and linebackers are going to carry their defense with Cole Aubrey, Nayim Rodman, Suave Pody. You know, Kobe Pepe and Sarah Nosegard transfer. Kyle Bennett, you know, and, and Romeo Galasso. So they have all that depth. Um, linebackers, Raylan Groforth, um, Jacob Jordanal, and survived newcomers, you know, Spencer Lytle and, and Court Williams, you know, are going to man that the, the backers. And we mentioned the secondary kind of being their Achilles heel, um, and that's mainly because of who they had, who's Bosco has had as their secondary the past two seasons. Um, obviously, Chris Steele as cornerback is their strength, um, but with Titus Toller, Trent McDuffie, and Jake Newman, and Jake uh, Bailey, you know, it showed at times they've given up more than, than we expected in the offseason at passing tournaments. I know it's passing tournaments, but it's still coverage. Um, but we're, you know, kind of splitting hairs because they are talented and the pass rush should, should help. But, you know, if you had to pick pick something that would be it in their secondary yeah just a you know there's a lot of talent you know you especially look at some of these commits you know uh judd wolf usc that tight end isn't the receiver chris hudson he's already committed to usc right correct yes and then chris Steele, usc yes so three um trojan commits um you mentioned um the D lineman, right? Uh, Potty. Yes, Suave. Suave, He's Oregon, Oregon He's commit. Oregon. You know, Colby Bowman, who I like a lot. Saw him in track. Saw him in passing league. A deep threat. Committed to Stanford. You know, he's he's going to have a big year. He looked great at the Edison tournament. Just running past people. He doesn't drop it. Um, Spencer Lytle now headed to Wisconsin. Where's uh, and then uh, how about and then um. Well, then yeah. Titus Toller, uh, Colorado, um, who, uh, uh, and then so is uh, the other lineman, uh, Rodman's committed to Colorado. Yeah, that's correct. 
And then you mentioned Talavu coming back as Utah commit. I mean, um, that's a lot of lot of guys, uh, a lot of seniors, uh, huh, Scotty? It is, and that's you know that's what it takes. Uh, we we saw the blueprint Modern Day had, and uh, Bosco's kind of doing that same thing, you know, and they're relying on that that their senior group, um, and it's all about the brotherhood and friends and family, and they all you know keep making note of it that that's you know that's what's going to get them through it so yeah when we the guys we have and as far as college commitments that we haven't mentioned is you know trent mcduffie haven't heard about his commitment yet maybe jake um bailey there's a couple other guys that they could get um but i think they're going to be tough they're going to be it's going to be i think the gap and i know we'll get to this is closer i think between modern day this year and bosco um but we will get to that. I, I'm not a big fan. I'll say it now. I'm not a huge fan of their schedule, um, which uh, as far as the challenges for them, where, um, you know, I don't think, um, you know, they're o- opening with the, the Utah team, um, Timpview, uh, Garces of Bakersfield, and um, they're playing a Hawaiian team, uh, Mili- Mililana, uh, Paramount, and Chaminade. Um I'll, I'll say that maybe that Chaminade game will be pretty good, um, but nothing like modern day schedule, or and not really like what Bosco's played before. What's your thoughts on the Brave schedule? Yeah, it is. It, they had trouble scheduling this year. Um, I think there was some talk that they were trying to get a team from Florida and a team from Hawaii, and both of those fell through, and so it and they kind of picked up this Tim Pew and. Um, you know, I think they're. I think they have Paramount on that on that as well. So it's right. kind of, uh, uh, you know, it it is what it is. But at, 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 in the end, um, you know, you kind of gotta. That's what happens when you're these national powers. It's hard because nobody wants to play against you. So you kind of gotta take what you get. That's right. All right. Well, we're almost done here with our team outlooks. We appreciate everybody joining us here on the Trinity League football podcast thank you for listening please tell your friends support and like our videos if you see them posted on on facebook or uh youtube where we're posting all this stuff um like us on twitter please uh please let us know that you like what we're doing and we're working hard for you and we appreciate you listening a couple more teams uh let's go with jay sarah which has got a big game this friday that we'll be talking about but let's uh let's talk about the team outlook for the the Lions who uh, got off that fast start. I think last week I said they started eight and zero last year. They actually started seven and zero, and they lost in week eight, undefeated uh, showdown with Modern Day. But they started out, uh, you know, blazing fire. Um, kind of slowed out uh, toward the end of the year. Um, you know, you know they lost in the first round of the playoffs in a in a high scoring game. Believe it or not, sixty to forty four. But they had some problems on defense. Uh, Toward the end, for sure, because they also gave up 51 points the previous game to uh, St. John Bosco. But overall, it was uh, you know a uh, pretty solid year for Coach Harlow. Seven and four, two and three in the league. Tough loss against uh, Santa Margarita. Um, kind of a, a very close swing game. But what's your outlook on on? Uh, it could be a very good um, Jay Sarah team. Yeah. Like I said last week, I think Jay Sarah's, you know, they're not going to have a Robinson at, at quarterback in six seasons. Um, you know, Servite, Caden Bell will kind of duplicate, you know, the moxie the Robinson brothers brought to the Jay Sarah program. Um, they carried the Lions for a lot of games, you know, a lot of wins over their six seasons. You know, he certainly, you know, is going to have help with the, you know, former running back, MD running back, Chris Street. You know, wide receivers Tarek Luckett, Moonar McLean, and, and Tyler Schumer, who we talked about last week, they're going to be their core guys. You know, then Manning the Lions up front, you know, there's returner Ryan Blythe and Jack Harlow. And then they're going to be joined by a few uh, new transfers Ryan Sufaloa from Centennial, Junior Jeff Percy from Modern Day, and, and another junior. I'm not sure if he's going to get a lot of time or not, from ML King. Um, Sulu, Sulufa started at guard for Centennial last season and then Percy was a 6'6", 210 pound tight end at modern day and he's gained about 40 pounds to make that transition to offensive tackle so that's going to be interesting to watch him um, play offensive tackle after being a tight end 
you know, he has great upside with his size and frame, but playing in that Trinity League, you know, it's going to be it's going to be huge. Um, so defensively, sir, they were pretty much a Jekyll and Hyde defense last season, keeping the opposition to low scores, and then they would come back and they'd give up about four touchdowns. So uh, the next game, you know, despite you know losing Malik Abdul McLean on their defensive line, yeah, you know, they're still going to be bolstered by two new transfer defense alignment it kind of seems to be like a reoccurring theme here with everybody but you know they have a 6'3 265 Shaq Labou from Long Beach Poly and a 6'2 270 Uatele Moala um, yeah. from um, NL King to go with returning Shane Nelson and Grant Ristoff you know and Nelson is up 20 pounds from last year he's going to be playing at 265 so that's going to help too um, linebackers are being led by Victor Clanton and strong safety slash hybrid Calvin Mousset. Yep. Um, and their secondary, Tyler Schumer, returns as their lone starter at free safety. And junior Anthony Ward looks to be slated strong. And then they're going to have two newcomers transfer modern-day sophomores, Amaji Duncan and a Pacifica transfer, Hagen Foreman, who was the first-team All-Empire League selection. And he had seven picks last year um, to go along. He's going to go along with Coachella. Morris Walker to round out their corners so um, you know and, and I know we can you know we touch basis on all the transfers you know if anybody's keeping score you know Jay Aaron led their way with 15 I know we didn't mention everybody um, but um, regardless of that Jay Sarah is still going to be fun to watch and they're still going to um, you know I, I think they're going to have they have the potential to be a better better than they were last year yeah, I'm pretty high on Jay Sarah. I mean, so high. Um, in Orange County, I have them ranked third third in the preseason. I gave them the notch over Mission Viejo. I just think they they have a lot of guys. They have to gel. And, and I, it's a common theme we talked about with Modern Day. They've got to gel. But you look at with Caden Bell, a healthy Moonar McLean, Malik, I'm sorry, Moonar McLean, a Tarek Luckett, Chris Street, um... You know, uh, they got a ton of weapons, and if they can get that line to block and protect, and spring some holes, and they got to play a much, you know, play discipline and try to cut down the mistakes that really hurt them last year, the offense is going to be could be really um, a lot to deal with because of you know they and you know a lot of it goes back to Coach Harlow being an offensive line man at heart and you know his background as a player, they're going to pound it and get physical. And um, they'll be balanced, and they'll help out Caden Bell. So that's going to be a lot for people to deal with if they're playing well. And then it's you know I think the thing they have to worry obviously work on is those the secondary and the in the corners. But maybe their defensive line can help them. I um, I talked to Coach Harlow. He he likes uh, Mayola and um, Shaq as impact guys. I like Sean Nielsen a lot. Uh, he's a preseason. You know, all county type guy to watch. He's got a great motor. I think he can be like um, Malik McLean. He's a San Diego State commit uh, in Nelson, and um, you know, see what else they can. You know, they, you know, uh, Victor. They're going to need some help at linebacker, and the the back. The well, Calvin will help coming up, but they're just a couple players maybe that they need to develop and get some good production on in the in the secondary. But they're pretty close to being really good um and i could see it going either way uh for them but i think they're going to be better um you know if, if they're playing well i think they could give a lot of trouble to orange lutheran and maybe even uh we'll see you know how if they can kind of match up and be more competitive with like a modern day or bosco yeah because it's a long ways between now and then and you know a lot can happen you know if some guys develop you know or there's injuries or you know um, last year was just a perfect, you know, everything went according to plan when, you know, it ended up being them and modern day being undefeated at that, at that time. Um, but, uh, you know, on paper, you know, they have it all right there. Like you said, it's just that they got to get through a couple of, uh, you know, some concerns through their second, but everything else they're they're solid. You know, if you watch too, if you, it is, you know, one thing that I think kind of slowed them down a little bit and it was understandable. But, you know, Al Fisher got off to a great start last year. And even in the first Trinity League game, um, I think it was against Servite, he had a huge game, ran, rushed for almost 300 yards. The guy just wore down. And then they weren't able to really um, 
run and, and, and balance out their offense toward the end of the year. And if if Chris Street is running wild or if they're able to not use him too much early on the year and keep him fresh, that could be another dynamic where if you have Jay Sarah coming in and you have one of the rising um, running backs in Southern California running loose, that could make them look pretty different. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And um, like I said, we've everybody, we've all talked about street, and I think, you know, that's going to be very key for them. So, yeah. All right. Last but not least, uh, team outlook for modern day. Of course, we know the defending national champs, 15-0 and last year, a school record for victories, 5-0 and in the Trinity League. They've won that the last uh, two years. But, Scotty, what's your outlook on, you know, another team with has a lot of transfers, some new players at key spots, guys like Bryce Young at quarterback, and um, they they have a big injury that they're losing, uh, they think for the year perhaps, in Mace Funa, but they got some new linebackers. Um, they got some new D linemen to really watch. They didn't get to play last year. Guys like Bennett, Hudson Ware that are real studs in the interior. Um, but what's your thoughts on the Monarchs? And they got that – you know, revamped offensive line too. Yeah, you know, first, you know, it's going to start with uh, Brew McCoy, um, who without a doubt is, I think, the number one player in Orange County. Um, you know, and then there's, you know, in bright with Bryce Young, you know, you know what he did at Cathedral. They're going to be the focal point in the passing game, but with the balance between Dollars Harper, Brady Huffman Dixon, and Big Mike Martinez, you know, they're going to make the offense go. And as I mentioned last week, you know, don't look for the air raid, you know, but more of a balanced running and passing with the new look O-line. You know, even though this O-line is a new group, they're potentially a better run blocking team than last year's line who were the pass protection pros. Um, you know, Miles Morrow returns, you know, he's moving to left tackle. You got George Mickey Han, who's going to go be at center. And then juniors Ty Marks and Kuamata Lavasa at the guards. You know, and Marks, you know, is going to establish himself, you know, and he was worthy enough to be, um, you know, on your 150. Uh, yeah. I know it was kind of tough, but, um, but you know, watch for him. You know, on defensive front, you know, it's our, their secondary. That's going to be the catalyst for the defense. Elias Ricks rated the number one cornerback for the 220 class. He kind of turned it up this summer, dominating these national camps. And he showed it at the Edison tournament, blanking receivers, including Kyle Ford, who was abusing DBs all summer. Um, you know, Ricks is at once in a generation corner, 6'3", long arms, who can run, which allows him to cover a lot of space, you know, combined with Darion Green-Warren, you know, who's more than just the other corner. Um, you know, he's, he could be a number one anywhere else as well. You got William Nemo, Jeremiah Cridell. Who I think is going to have a great year out of that safety spot because he's going to be utilized all over the field. Linebackers are going to go seven deep. You know, it's the position MD has the most depth. Um, you know, former safety Nate White's going to move to outside backers. Yeah. So Lubar is going to move inside with Dean Neely, who took over for Solo when he went down last year. Um, and then uh, transfer, you know, Jacob Fuamata from La Habra looks to he looks to be right now to, to have replaced Funa at outside linebacker. Um, defensive line is going to be manned by Kenyon and Ware Hudson, Evan Bennett and Safita Tupe and Martin Salazar as the mainstays. And it's an entirely new line, you know, with the exception of Salazar, who we said, you know, he played in the rotation until he got hurt. Um, but the talent and the strengths are there. Um, as a team, they're going to go as far as offensive line and linebackers take them if they win in the trenches and of course stay healthy you know things are looking you know good for md you know they pretty much stayed healthy last year with the exception of losing solo late in the playoffs you know you know but that depth is going to be an issue everywhere except for linebacker so if they should have to go and dip into the backups you know they don't have the quality of backups to sustain the, this big run um but if all stays on par you know modern day is going to be right there at the end play, playing for uh, championships yeah, and you mentioned the run, which starts uh, for Monarchs, uh, starts this week against uh, at, the, at Santa Ana Bowl against Bishop Amon, who I think they'll handle. They handled them last year. But then it it, it, it uh, begins in earnest uh, next you know week from Friday. They'll be in the, in the desert, as Coach Rollinson has said, against Bishop Gorman, who's going to be uh, of Las Vegas, who's going to be looking for big-time revenge after the Monarchs pretty much beat up the the, the Gales last year at the Bull. I mean, Bishop Gorman's got to have a bad taste in her mouth still from that 
from that beatdown um, was a coming out party for Modern Day. Then, you know, Modern Day is going to take that break a little bit against uh, La Mirada. That's that's a weak game. Um, but, uh, you, you know, then they're going to ramp it up against St. Mary's, who's a pretty good team, won 11 games last year out of the Sac, Sac Joaquin um, section. But then they're playing IMG, another nationally ranked team, on uh, the uh, 21st of September. That's also the St. Anna Bowl. So that Bishop Gorman game is coming soon. And then it's going to be, before long, it's going to be the IMG game that's going to have everybody talking. And, um, and these are top top national teams. So it's going to be quite a uh, game. You know, the one thing I think, you know, I think, you know, line play is going to be important on the offensive line. But I also wonder, Scotty, what about the mentality of, you know, that you know, leadership is going to be really important. Guys like Brew McCoy, um, Shakobi Harper, um, Eli- um, well, Elias Ricks, Michael Martinez, Steele Dunbar is one of their captains. I think that's their captains is Dunbar, Brew McCoy, Big Mike. Um, there's one other guy. I'm, I think it's is it Nemo. No, it, their their captains are are Brew, Mike Martinez, Steel Dubar, and Shakobi Harper. And Harper, you know, because that's one thing that that really helped Modern Day last year, uh, as they were building toward that special year, was you know they had great senior leaders. You know, guys like Tommy Brown, and obviously you know JT was you know, it ended up being his last year, but you had a guy like. JT that was you know a constant was a you know was an amazing leader um really was a team first guy and always seemed to say the right things um great practice players um you know those were those were really solid um type leaders um I think really um was big Solomon was a was a was a very good leader um by example I think the 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 mentality like you that you, you know Amon Ra I think that was contagious where you have a guy um, that um, was really fierce out there and um, brought it every every game. Um, that was kind of con- uh, contagious. And I always thought I always thought uh, Amon Ra showed a, a lot last year when he was I well, wasn't he hurt a little bit early in the year, but he was uh, he was jumping around and supporting his teammates in in uh, in a game he couldn't play in. Um, I think that was pretty big. I believe that was his uh, last year. Maybe it was his junior year. Um, if the years are blending in, I, yeah, it was last year. He yeah, was hurt, year. hurt a little bit, but he was uh, he had great energy on the sideline, supporting his teammates. This modern day team has got to find um, that kind of mentality that you know uh, that made those teams champion. It's just not going to come to them based on their talent. Yeah, without a doubt, Dan, and that's that was part of the uh, you know the off season you know concern that we had talked about last week because we don't know you know the adversity that these guys are going to face and how they you know how they do they crumble do they uh, uh, take it because um, last year there was no adversity realistically I mean they never trailed in, in a game so you know Brew Shakobi Mike. Steel, you know, they all been there, so they, you know, they're the ones that that are going to have to get these guys who have never been there. Um, and um, when it does happen, you know, they're going to have to fight through it because you know this team is is by far different than it was last year. I mean, we want to still say it's it's modern day, but you know, you know, JT and Amon and those guys, you know, that wide receiver core, that all offensive line was 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 something special, and they you know, even though the you know the secondary remains intact, um, but everything else doesn't. And um, so it's it, that's and that's the one thing you know. It's it's the senior sh- leadership is big, and um, that's why we, we we had alluded to Bosco earlier as having that as well. So we'll see, you know, in the end how this plays out when we can go all back and look yeah. at it, how you know what were the catalysts for why this you know who won so. All right, Scotty. Well, hey, great job on all of uh, six of those teams. Our outlooks for those, uh, those, uh, all six of those teams. Now, before we give our predictions, let's move real quick and talk about some of our breakout players for each team. Um, so, why don't we start with our breakout players? Um, let's start back up with those uh, Santa Margaritas, uh, Santa Margarita Eagles. Who's your breakout player for them? I, I'm going with that Chase Nian. He's a six-three receiver. He's kind of been a pleasant surprise in the camp for Eagles, who are need of, who are in need of skilled players. As a sophomore, he only caught nine passes for 120 yards. 
two touchdowns, but I'm surely that's going to be improved on. All right. Well, I'll throw, uh, I think, you know, who will become a star, I think, will be Jake Thomas. I mentioned him last year, last week. I got his name wrong, so I'm going to make it better here with Jake Thomas running back. I think that strong offensive line that we talked about, the sophomore quarterback, Castelli, who they're not going to want to rush, and they're going to want to, you know, give him as much uh, balance um, and protection from defenses as much as possible. And the way he ran so hard last year, I think he's a, a thousand yard rusher. Um, behind that offensive line. Um, he's got an early offer from Stetson, and I think he's got a good chance to really pick up that slack from Chad Magyar uh, last year, who was our all county, one of our all-county running backs. Um, how about Servite? Scotty, who's your breakout player with the Friars? Uh, I'm going to go with Julian Alessi uh, for what he did at PV as a sophomore. Yeah. You know, now he's been given the shot to be their kind of main offensive threat in the, in the early go. Um, he should put the improve his sophomore numbers, um, you know, and like I said, until the Friars, you know, can have some other kids step up offensively, I think he's going to be their, their kind of go-to guy. All right. Well, that's a good one. I'm going to go with another, uh, I'm going to go with a senior, uh, Julian is a, a junior transfer from PV, as we mentioned, but I'm going to go with Cade Fuller, uh, six, three senior. Um, I, I know you mentioned him at corner earlier, earlier today. I, I'm expecting to see him at safety. He's also a real good punter, but I could see him at, you know, different packages at corner. Um, and I think he'll be a good receiver for him. But I know he's a guy I think uh, could really break out um, this year. No, I, I I had him at safety. Oh, you did? I okay. I, yeah, so I think it was the other two two other sophomores I had come oh, okay. in at Kohler. But it's all right. Nope, nope, all good. Let's go Orange Lutheran, Scotty. Who's your breakout player, 2018? That's going to be. Uh, I'm going to go with Ethan Ray. Um, I mean, the yeah. last season he was he was set to contribute and make a name for himself on the field, and then an off season knee injury kind of you know stopped that short. Um, he's back stronger. You know, watch for him. You know, he's added strength. Um, you know, adds a tight end. I know they're kind of loaded at tight end, but he may possibly play defensive line, but. You know, I know he was primed to play defense last year before the injury, so I, he may just be limited to just tight end. But either way, I think he's going to have a, a, a you know a breakout season. All right, I'm going to go Reggie Strong because uh, uh, senior running back safety. I think he, you know, Ryan Linsky said they're going to commit more to the run. The quarterback told me that during the summer. I think that would be good uh, to get more balance uh, on that offense, um, keep that defense off the field a little bit. Um, you know, uh, and and I think you know the balance will really help him out. So I think Reggie could have a uh, you know breakout year. I think he's really good um, on the secondary too. I but I, I'm thinking more of him at running back if they indeed commit to uh, running the ball um, with Reggie. Yeah, I, I agree. That's another one too. If they if they do commit to the run and they do get their run game, it's, it you know Reggie will be the the guy to to uh, to make that go. So. All right, how about St. John Bosco? I'm going to go with Chris Hudson. Um, yeah. You know, he basically, with Josh Delgado gone off to IMG, right. you know, Hudson made huge strides during the offseason, you know, which paid off with the with getting that USC offer and then committing. You know, look for Hudson as, you know, he's one of those, you know, the three go-to guys in their off passing offense. You know, he just seemed to get better last season. Um, you know, he started low on the depth chart and he worked his way up, you know, and um, his quickness and his, his solid, you know, his hands make him a solid target. And so I, I, I love for him to be one of the, uh, you know, breakout guys for Bosco this year. I can't argue with uh, Chris Hudson, that's for sure. Um, I will, I'll agree with you on that one. How about Jay Sarah? Uh, this one's pretty. Uh, I'm going with Chris Street. You know, I think it's obvious in the consensus. I mean, everybody keeps talking about him. Um, I think he's going to put up numbers. He certainly showed flashes of brilliance last season. He only carried the ball five times a game last season, but you know those runs showed enough that you know he's going to be a top back. Um, you know, we mentioned that he's probably the favorite to lead the league in rushing. Yeah, I will. Uh, I can't. I, I think that's a great pick as well. I'm going to go with Calvin Musset, who I think, you know, that, playing that linebacker safety spot, senior leader. He's uh, been described as the heartbeat of that program on, de- on defensively. He's got an uh, offer from Sacramento State. And I think uh, him and Victor uh, Clanton are going to really uh, have a great year on that defense. And they're going to be really important because that's going to be important uh, 
you know, for that secondary to make some stops, get that defense off the field, um, be sure tacklers, um, maybe force a turnover too. I think those are the kind of guys that the, those playmakers that they'll need. Um, so I think Calvin Massette's my uh, my breakout player. Yeah, our good picks, Dan. All right, and let's uh, finish up with the Monarchs. Uh, who is your breakout player for the Monarchs? I'm going to go with Mike Martinez, you know, for a guy who was an afterthought last season. You know, he's blossomed in the offseason. He's going to be an integral part of the offense, um, you know, by the number of one-handed grabs with players draped all over him during the summer tournaments. You know, it previewed, you know, the, what a big target Martinez should play this season. Uh, and as you mentioned, he's one of the captains for MD. So, you know, I look for that leadership role, you know, to, to step up and, um, and have a good year. All right. I'm going to throw out Cody Epps, shorthanded junior receiver, um, as stepping up and pushing. You know, maybe he'll push up for that number two receiver spot, but number three. But I think he's a real important guy to watch this year because he's a junior, just like Bryce Young is a junior. So that's your future duo um, at Modern Day. And, of course, Brew McCoy's number one target, Braden Huffman-Dixon, is right there, Colorado commit. But watch out for Cody Epps. There's some other receivers. There's some depth there at receiver from Modern Day. But the last time I saw we saw Cody Epps, he looked outstanding at the Mission Viejo tournament. He's got an offer from Oregon, but I'm really interested to see how this uh, plays out. Cody Epps and Bryce Young. Yeah, that's a good pick too. I probably he'd probably be the the um, probably the next guy on my list. All right. Well, those are our breakout players. Last week, you can go back listen to our podcast. We broke out our uh, under the radar players. Uh, all different guys. We didn't repeat any of the uh, the guys tonight, so that that is good. So check out that and. Um, again, thanks for joining us here on the the Tree League Football Podcast, um, Scotty. Let's let's get right down to it. Let's let's not waste any more time. So let's let's do our predictions here, one through six. Some people think it's going to be top four to make the the playoffs this year in in, in Division One. But how, how do you see the the Tree League going? Uh, you know what? It's I've been toying back and forth with this um i'm still gonna go i'm gonna go with modern day st john bosco olu j sarah santa margarita and then survive oh <laughs> oh my goodness we got the same one right there um the big question marks are going to be you know that's exactly the order i have it you know the big you know it's going to be right at the top modern day st john bosco who wins that and to me it's going to, you know, that Servite Santa Margarita is pretty tough. I went back and forth on my um, predictions on that one. Who, who do, Where do you rank those two teams? But I think top and bottom. But I think you were also thinking you see more tiers this year where last year, you know, everybody, it was, it was modern day Bosco and everybody else. But I think you were saying you kind of see more different tiers, which I can see maybe, I mean, does anybody join modern day Bosco in that tier to you, and, and how do you see these tiers playing out that you have uh, kind of mentioned to me? Yeah, so this year, you know, it's I have it separated into three. Um, last year we had two. You know, this year it's still going to be Modern Day Bosco, and then the next two are going to be Orange Luth and J. Sarah, and then the next would be Servite and Santa Margarita. And they're kind of spaced, and they're all spaced out. The gaps are drastic, um, and, and it doesn't show that in the rankings. So when you see, you know, these rankings of, you know, Olu 2, J. Sarah 3, Santa Margarita 5, you know, but it's not that close. Um, I mean, they teams have closed the gap, but it's still not that close. When you get down to modern day and Bosco, you know, it, it. a lot of people say they're going to split. You know, whoever loses this game is going to win the championship or whoever, you know, vice versa. You know, I'm not sold that this year someone goes and runs the table. I think they I think it, it's going to be a, a split, but it, it's it's hard. It's flip of the coin on who wins out. Um, you know, look at Jay Sarah and Olu. Same with that. You know, right now, I, you know, I have Olu. But I wouldn't be surprised if Jay Sarah took that game. You know, then we have the Santa Margarita and Servite. You know, that loser is probably going to be the winless team in Trinity League. Um, and um, but right now, you know, I have Santa Margarita over over Servite for that one. Yeah, 
Oh, that's interesting. I, I, I think you, you got some good points there. And one thing I, I think about is the schedule too. I think it could be a little bit more wild this year in the training league because um, I didn't see, and I, I looked through each team, nobody uh, out, nobody has to play modern day and Bosco back-to-back games. And I think that's huge. <laughs> and I think there were some teams that sometimes get, you know, you start out or you, you, some when you have to play them back-to-back is, is really brutal. And uh, I think it's more spread out this year as far as the schedule. Um, and I think that's going to be important. Yeah, I think Servite was the always was the bearer of that one. Yeah. So they may must have, you know, they, on the rotation must have flipped. So. Yeah, like Friars this year, they opened with Modern Day, as we mentioned, and their last game is with Bosco. That's right, and, yeah. And so they got them uh, spread out. You know, you have to think about Modern Day with their schedule where, you know, they got IMG very next week. They open with their, you know, rival Servite. Then they play Santa Margarita, then Bosco. That's still a tough stretch uh, of games. And, and that's what, what Coach uh, Rollinson, um, you know, talked about. Um, you know, Santa Margarita, I think, is as far as uh, their schedule, there will be a lot of earnest, uh, you know, like always, that first Trinity League game for them because they're going to open up against Olu. And that's going to be a huge game. Orange Coast College, then they play Modern Day. So that Orange Lutheran opener is going to be real important for Santa Margarita because then they play Servite and then they play Bosco. So that that's one of the schedules that uh, you, you know keep an, keep an eye on as far as it's definitely a, a playoff team. And you know the way we look at it, right, Scotty? If it is only top four make playoffs, I mean we would have Modern Day, Bosco, and then we'd have Olu and uh, Jay Sarah and those two teams I mentioned earlier about being better next year. They'd be on the outside, Santa Margarita, um, J. Sarah. I mean, uh, Servite, right. excuse me. Yeah, that's, that, that's right. I mean, no at large this year, huh? I think that's, it's, it's, uh, it's always seemed to be that they would always get that, they would always be have that, uh, modern, or they would always have an at large. But I'm yeah, not well, so sure this year. Yeah, and we'll be breaking that down, and a lot of it depends on how how everybody does, you know, and um, you know, for the uh, you know what kind of seasons everybody's having. So, um, all right, Scotty. Well, we've gotten down to our overviews. We have talked about our uh, breakout players, and we got down to the predictions, which we we uh, amazingly uh, agree on. So let's talk about this week's games. We got six games. Uh, let's start with Thursday night. So Servite Troy Thomas makes his return. Uh, with Servite as their head coach for the second time. They play host to Bakersfield at San Ana Stadium. That's on Thursday, August 16th, 7 o'clock kickoff. Um, so like we said, Servite's only got the uh, four non-league games at this point. Um, Bakersfield 6-6 six and six last year. Um, they're from the central section. Any thoughts on this game, Scotty? Uh, you know, the drillers, they... they return you know their core offensive skill guys and it starts with the washington commit quarterback cameron williams and he threw for six seven hundred and sixty eight yards seven touchdowns he was fifty percent but they're a running team and williams is re- being recruited as a defensive back so but okay. he's very skillful and talented so that you know that ap- athleticism is going to be huge you know they're as i mentioned you know they ran they put up 2,400 yards rushing between six players last year, but two of them return. Um, they have a kid named Taj Wright who ran for 401 yards, four touchdowns, and Seante Bell, we had 520 yards, seven touchdowns. Um, Wright was also their leading returner receiver with 23 catches for 613 yards, so he's like their big, deep threat. Um, so this is an interesting game. You know, I mean, I mean, Bakerfield was 6-6 six and six last year, Um you know, seeing the position serve rights in, having to rebuild everything, um, you know, as we talked earlier, not having to play a scrimmage. So this is the first time that they put everything together on the field. You know, can serve, I pull it off. I, you know, I thought, you know, you know, she was going to go to show how much of a big deal Troy Thomas is for Servite if, if they come in and uh, end up pulling this one out, you know, so we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, that's going to be a big game. You know, they'd love to get off to a great start. Uh, for the Friars, um, you know, we'll see how how locked they uh, locked in they are. Um, how good are those special teams right away? How um, how much is how much is the execution there? 
you know, how does Blaze McKibben look, right? Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, how you know, like I said, we haven't seen anything of them other than you know what what they've all seen each other in practice. So, right. All right. Also on Thursday, so we also have Santa Margarita taking on Downey. Um, that is at Tribuco Hills High School, the sixteenth of August, seven o'clock. Last year, this game was you know pretty ugly, I and mean, Downey ended up having a great year. I believe they got to the uh, semifinals. Um, but um, of the, in their division, Division Four. But you know, last year Santa Margarita uh, won this game. It was also an opening game for both these teams, uh, fifty-six to nothing, um, and that game was at Downey. So, um, but D- Downey was a very scrappy team. They're from the San Gabriel Valley League. Um, they end up winning eleven games last year, and they lost. They won a lot of uh, close ones. They got a nice roll um, after this, and you know, obviously got to the. Uh, or actually, it was D four finals. They lost to, um, excuse me, they lost to Cajon um, in the Division four uh, semis. They beat a couple uh, Orange County teams um, in pretty close games. They had a close game with Crone Del Mar last year in the playoffs. Um, they're getting some St. John Bosco players, so they're pretty athletic. Um, but what do you know about Downey? Yeah, you know it was kind of crazy after getting that drubbing fifty six zero. Uh, you know they they come in as as the uh, press telegrams number seven team in the area. They they, they return four all CAF players, including one of the top area dual threat QBs in Kajan Foots, who threw for thirty one hundred yards, twenty six touchdowns. He completed sixty seven percent of his passes, and he ran for eleven hundred yards with fourteen touchdowns. But he lost his running mate Barack Boss. Ross to graduation, you know, as a team, they ran for 4,200 yards. Um, Noah Scobus returns as their leading receiver. He caught 27 passes for 415 yards, three touchdowns, and then defensively, their best two-way player, Malcolm Perry, is a 5'10", 225-pound linebacker, leads that way. So I don't know if Foots has the supporting cast as he did last year. Um, the way the Eagles manhandled the Vikings, you know, this could be the same go down as the same way. Uh, just the Trinity League versus a, you know, a, a Division Four team, um, you know, but it may not be fifty-six zero, but it won't probably be that close either. Yeah, I, I would, I sh- it should be closer with all the tra- you know changes that uh, Santa Margarita is undergoing. Sophomore quarterback making his uh, Costelli making his Santa Margarita debut. Um, Downey's actually moved up. Uh, not surprisingly, they're up actually in Division Three, so they'll be an interesting team to kind of watch with the the Cajones in Division Three. Hart, um, Paraclete, maybe Charter Oak. Um, those are some of the kind of contenders to watch. I'm hearing some good things about Capo Valley. They're they've also moved up in Division Three. Nathan Manny is a really good quarterback. I heard they've looked good in the passing league. So um, you know that's another you know D three team perhaps. Uh, Sierra Canyon's a Division Three team, so I think this is going to be a big game for uh, for all those new players at Santa Margarita and obviously uh, Costelli. But I I would think Santa Margarita rolls pretty good. Um, so let's also go uh, on. Uh, let's go to Friday schedule. So um, what do you think about uh, St. John Bosco opening that new uh, new stadium? that looks uh, wonderful. There's a video on uh, OC Varsity's YouTube channel that we uh, profiled. Um, that stadium, they're taking on uh, 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 Temp View from uh, Utah. Um, that's a Friday, seven o'clock start, and maybe it'll be some festivities before the game. Uh, who knows? But uh, uh, Temp View was seven and three last year um, from Utah. They're a, a five A team from Utah, one of the bigger divisions. But uh, what are you thinking about the, this game, Scotty? Yeah, the uh, you know they're the thirteen. They were thirteen. Finished the thirteenth ranked team in Utah last year, and then this year they come in at number eleven, um, despite not returning a lot. You know, they have three offensive linemen come back and a wide receiver, Rowan Way, who goes six four. You know, he caught thirty nine passes for like five hundred six yards, five TDs, but they returned zero, I, zero returning on defense. Uh-oh. So, oh, that's going to be that's going to be very uh, <laughs> not a good sign. Uh-oh. So, you know. And they have four guys vying for a starting quarterback job. Uh-oh. So they haven't even narrowed that down. So And then they're going to go four deep with their running backs, which apparently is their strength. 
So this is a tall task to take on a St. John Bosco this early. You know, I don't see the Braves having an issue with them. So, I, you know, I think they're going to roll with this one. All right. How about our Orange Lutheran Lancers uh, going down South County, taking on San Juan Hills. This is game's also on Friday the 17th, 7 o'clock started at the uh, the Badlands, as they call them, at uh, San Juan Hills. A coaching debut for one Robert Frith, the former El Toro uh, head coach who was known for uh, uh, coaching another Manning. That would be Connor Manning, former county record holder and um, was a you know great passer. And Rob Frith has been known for um, his up-tempo, no-huddle, spread offense. Um, so there will probably be some of that. Um, I, San Juan Hill scrimmaged Capo Valley and the word was that Capo, of course, with Nathan Manny looked pretty good and was, uh, and, and San Juan Hills had some trouble defending, um, Nathan Manning who threw about three or four touchdowns in that, then that scrimmage and limited, uh, time of course. Uh, so that is, I expect Holinsky, uh, and company to get off to a big flying start in this game. I agree. Uh, when I heard that news, I was like, uh, this doesn't sound good for uh, San Juan, uh, San Juan Hills. Um, you know, I know they're going to have that. They have the nation's one of the top linemen with uh, Sean Ryan. You know, yes. But that's pretty much it. You know, they don't re- return much on either side of the ball. I think they, you know, their leading rusher is Chase Monarch, who had 355 yards. He's their top statistical leader. I think they they lost one of their best defensive players, Frisco Toyate, who transferred out went over to Carson he yes. had six and a half sacks and uh he had like 50 tackles from their linebacker spot um I just I don't see you know them giving no little much resistance especially you know what was displayed in the scrimmage um so that's what I have on that one there was a couple guys that I, and the Carson kid um De, uh Frisco definitely got on my radar who's the guy I was looking for this year um there was a couple guys I thought looked um really good on um film uh for um i'm trying to find them on from san juan hills but they had a uh, defensive end who's um, got an offer from byu um so i'm interested to see how he does and then they had also had a secondary a safety receiver guy that i think could be pretty good so um but i, I think i think san juan is going to be still uh, outmatched but I, I think at specific spots um let's see how um, uh, Cade uh, Albright is the the senior defensive end. Um, let's see how um, how that goes with a an Orange Lutheran tackle. Um, I don't know. I mean, one guy, one matchup, um, but something for Orange Lutheran to to look at. Cade's uh, six five two hundred um, and got a good motor, so um, he's one of uh, he's was a good player. And we'll see how they uh, defensively uh, if if uh, how they match up. If uh, San Juan Hills really has their offense going right away, which would seem unlikely in, you know, Coach Rob Frist's first game, so um, let's also go on Friday to San Ana Stadium, the Bowl, where Modern Day is taking on Bishop Amont. Last year, this game also was uh, a blowout city, um, and I wouldn't expect it to be any uh, any different. Um, last year, Modern Day, in its very first game of the year, won. Um, well, that was thirty-one to seven. Um, uh, at Bishop Amon, I would I would expect something very similar to that. Yeah, the uh, you know the last season it was probably the closest game that Modern Day played as far as score wise. You know, it was kind of a win in a ho hum fashion. You know, but Modern Day began that season with numerous players out to injury, and it was JT's first game back from resting his his arm in the summer. Um, I think Modern Day tried to run the ball a little bit more, and so they didn't open it up as much. You know, and then Amont began the season 0-4 and then rallied to finish the season 5-2, and losing to Bosco the first round. Um, you know, and that game was 35-21, and the game was closer than the score indicated. You know, Amont comes into this season probably returning, you know, quarterback Adam Archuleta, who you know, threw for 1,400 yards, 12 TDs. And they have junior running back Damon Moore, who was kind of a surprise, ran for 700 yards as a sophomore. You know, they only return two offensive linemen, you know, the, to an offense that averaged 24 points a game. Defensively, Amont allowed 27 per game. You know, and they have three returners on defense. And then one to watch, newcomer to watch, is uh, sophomore Dyson 
McCutcheon. He's the son of former Amat star USC and NFL player Dalen McCutcheon. Okay. You know, so he's going to be, you know, playing some defense. I don't think they had a slate him offense, um, though he probably could because of his athleticism, but uh, he's going to be out, I think, at corner. Yeah, and Amat's a team for us to uh, to follow. I mean, I assume they're, they're the top-ranked team out of the San Gabriel Valley. Yes, they are. They gave him the number one spot, which is kind of a – you know, when you look at that, you know, I think they've even had them rated as high as 34 and 31 in California, which is, you know, I think is pretty high. And, and I know that, um, you know, my just they've just never been able to start out of the gate. Right. right. That's just been their MO. So I don't know. We'll see. I, I don't think, you know, I, I think modern day doesn't, you know, you know, depending on how rusty they are, um, if they are, you know, depends on how. I don't, I don't see Amont giving them any 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 trouble. Yeah, well, the, like I would say, the Lancers. I mean, and and good job on the breakdown, uh, Scotty. Um, they're an interesting team because, you know, preseason Division One, they're ranked tenth. Um, you look at the power rankings; they're somewhere maybe in the middle of. It's actually eighteen teams in Division One. So, you know, that's where you get those. You have to take two teams out. It's going to be a 16-team bracket. Um, so two teams are coming out, and people think it's going to be the Trinity League um, bottom two. But you have to watch out for Mott, too, because I think in a couple of weeks they play um, St. Jo- uh, they play Jay Sarah. Jay Sarah, yeah. So there's going to be always that interesting, um, you know, cross um, with a cup, playing a couple of Trinity League teams. Because I think outside of... Um, Modern Day um, and um, Jay Sarah, I think those are their big games. Uh, so we'll, see, we, you know, it's it'll be interesting to see how uh, the Lancers fare and what that might mean for um, this Modern Day Bishamon game. What does that mean for the Jay Sarah game? Yeah, that's that that's very true. Um, you know, a lot of it can change from them, but it just gives you an it'll give, it'll give you an idea, everybody an idea of where those two teams are at. So, all right, and last but not least. Corona Del Mar um, taking on Jay Sarah. That game's going to be at Jay Sarah, the the uh, friendly confines of the the stands, right close to the field at uh, the new on campus stadium. There, uh, you know, they kind of put it together there at Jay Sarah for intimate setting, little rowdy. But this is this is probably the best game in Orange County uh, week zero as far as uh, OC teams. Both teams ranked in the Orange County top ten. Um, Interesting side story, uh, you know, is that Corona Del Mar demolished Jay Sarah in the Passing League Summer Tournament at Redondo Beach. They Jay Sarah could not stop John Humphreys or Mark Redman or Ethan Garbers, but that was Passing League. Now it's going to be different where Bosco, I mean, uh, Jay, uh, Jay Sarah's got all those big linemen. They got Chris Street to uh, unleash. Um, there's going to be hitting from Victor Clanton and Calvin Musset. And um, a lot of big size at linemen um, for Jay Sarah. They'll be bigger. Uh, Corona Del Mar has one senior starter maybe on offense. Uh, Sean Owens is the outstanding center. But Corona Del Mar's best is really next year where, you know, Garbers and Humphreys and Redmond, they're all juniors. And people are still surprised when I tell them John Humphreys is a junior. So is Mark Redman and so is Ethan Garbers. They don't. People think they're seniors because they have all these, especially Redman and Humphreys have all these offers. They're only juniors. Um, I would still expect Jay Sarah to be able to win this game, but we'll see what, how much do they have to uh, spend to win this game, and how many points are they going to give up? Are they going to be able to make some stops, Scotty? Yeah, I mean, last year it was forty-five. 45- 27 and that way I was surprised that that Jay Sarah even gave up 27 allowed them 27 points you know does Cronin Omar close that gap you know I, I think you know Humphreys and Redmond match up with with anybody you know with Jay Sarah but I think that's probably going to be it you know I think you know Garber played in that backup role last season he gets his shot to build off what he did in the summer um you know, I expect the Lions' size up front to take over, and that's going to be the difference. You know, I think Humphreys and Redman will get their catches, but it'll be a similar role to last season. You know, they're going to be playing catch up. But you know, how many? You know, how many scores can they can they match? You know, they they're going to have to you know trade off pound you know punch for punch. But you know, I think the Sea Kings are small. 
you know, up front, you know, like yeah. we mentioned, their best O line is Sean Owens coming in at 6'3, 235. He's going to be outweighed nearly 30 pounds with Jay Sarah's defensive line. Um, you know, and the same can be said for their, for the Sea King defensive line versus Jay Sarah's offensive line, who's, who's averaging about 275. You know, so as, as first games go, you know, this is a good one. You know, kicks off the season. Um, but. Like I said, in, in the end, I think it's pretty much going to be similar to, to last year's score. Yeah. You know, and like you said, it's a good one. Jay Sarah's going to see some outstanding athletes, Pac-12 type guys. But have you noticed that Jay Sarah's got a pretty good schedule coming after this? And in, in like we, I just mentioned, the Amont game. Um, but the way it works out for Jay Sarah is after this game, they take on, they go up to play uh, Calabasas, who's pretty darn good, won 10 games last year. Then they play that Amont game at Amont. That's kind of why I think the our Trinity League football podcast guys got to watch that modern day Amont game because of what it means for Jay Sarah. And then uh, uh, on Saturday, August eighth, um, Jay Sarah takes on Pinnacle of um, Phoenix, Arizona, who's a, a really good team from uh, from the big uh, big league, uh, big division, I should say, in um, Arizona. That's going to be a kind of a showcase game at Moore Park College. Um, so those are pretty good uh, tests right out of the way, and then even you know they close after uh, they're before they start league, um, they take their bye week. They Jay Sarah opens with Bosco, by the way, in non league in the Trinity League. So I, I should have mentioned that one earlier. And then they close with Faith Lutheran, a pretty good team out of Las Vegas. Um, that's a home game. But Jay Sarah Scott, have you noticed that it's a pretty uh, good schedule? I mean. It's right. I mean, no one's playing modern day schedule, um, and Olu's playing Mission and Centennial and Heritage. Um, but I would say Jay Sarah has the third toughest schedule in the league. What do you say? No, I, I agree. You know, they stepped up by adding those. You know, the, that out of state game um, and, and picking up Calabasas. Um, kind of always kind of wanted to gauge because I don't think Calabasas has has played a D one team let alone a Trinity League in, in you know, the last three years when they've had all those big-time athletes. I think what separates them is, they're, you know, again, it's going to be the men in the trenches. And, and it'll be interesting, you know, when we see those three weeks, how the outcome of those games, because it'll be won and lost depending on, you know, being able, uh, Jay Sarah being able to control the line of scrimmage because I think that's been the difference with Jay Sarah's, they haven't. They've kind of struggled because they've been able. People have been able to push them around and and, and, and move the ball on on them and make things a little bit more challenging for them. And you know, it will be interesting to see if these guys, you know, just mow down everybody with with the size they have because they're probably going to be the biggest they have been in in the last few years. Yeah, and that's why I have them ranked uh, above Mission Viejo. I don't think Mission's got. If they were to hook up, I don't think Mission would have that kind of size. Um, and I know Mission doesn't have uh, as great – they say they don't have uh, as much depth as they had. And I, I think Jay Sarah doesn't have as many two-way players as as uh, as Jay Sarah. I mean, I think Jay Sarah has, has less two-way players than Mission. So we'll have to – and, and I, I should probably throw out, you know, Santa Margarita I think has got a good schedule too. I mean, um, they got Mission Viejo. Um, they're playing some – you know, there's they're playing another Utah team too. We might have to follow the Utah football a little bit closer too. Um, the 15th of September, they're playing Orem of Utah, um, who won 12 games last year. But we'll see. I mean, they're playing, you know, but they're also playing Downey and Mayfair. Um, I'm not sure how strong those are. There's a Cherry Creek team too, but Santa Margarita's schedule is not bad um, as well. So uh, it should be interesting, Scotty. So I assume you'll be at the modern day. A mod game? Yes, that's the game I will be at on Friday night. All right. Well, Scotty, great job tonight from the previews, predictions, breakout players. Great talking to you once again. Oh, as always, Dan, it's, it's, it's fun. I think this has probably been our uh, most in-depth uh, preview that we've had yet. Um, but I just hope everybody uh, enjoys uh, listening to it. Well, I know I, I hope so as well, and I know I enjoy talking to you, Scotty. So, Great job. Enjoy that game. I will be at the Jay Sarah game against uh, Corona Del Mar, so we'll have some audio back from that game. And wherever you go, enjoy the game. And thanks again for listening to us on the Trina League Football Podcast. The season. 
I think we're like we're we're getting better every day. Um, we're learning a lot. Um, I think the senior class is really uh, at least understanding. Like, all right, this is where we gotta go as leaders, and they're being taught what leadership looks like. And, you know, that's a big thing at Survive anyway. So we're really giving those guys a real uh, crash course on leadership. Yeah. And um, you know, they're listening. You know, it takes time though. Yeah. To, to become a great leader.